Good day to you. Um, so carrying on the uh, our lesson that I started uh, a bit ago, I'm going to try and show you the concept of the grammar of graphics within R. The idea being within this is if you're following your Christian data project process uh, as a framework, what you're going to do is you're going to generate a large number of hypotheses and R is great for producing lots of charts, lots of hypotheses in a short time, just pivoting from different uh, sort of comparisons but in the data. Uh, and hopefully, as I said, I'm I'd lean towards other programming languages, but hopefully if you never consider doing something like this maybe you'll find this interesting and come away and maybe consider do, just trying one of the one of these packages which are free are out there for you to use so as i said previously this it, this data is from kaggle you can find it if you set, set yourself up on there it's a comparison of all the big de different entertainment packages. Uh, I haven't gone into a huge amount of detail. I'm sure other internet video providers are available and this data might be out of date. So your, uh, your mileage may vary if you just decide to take this as a, uh, as a lesson on what uh, entertainment packages to get and not as a lesson on how to use R. So the grammar of graphics uh, system uses the same sort of syntax as C++. There's your library as ggplot2, two, uh, two, uh, two dashes, and there's the function as ggplot. To get started with this, you need to install the package tidyverse. Uh, E easily something you can look up on Google if you get confused uh, install.packages uh, R will t type some of this and has some sort of IntelliSense uh, library t t tidyverse needs to be run every time you want to use it uh, as previously said in the last video it, when you were setting yourself up you need to have your data in a position in a location say the CSV I recommend uh, you you can do other file setups, uh, delim tabs, uh, R will oblige. Uh, don't get into insanely strange data types at the moment. I haven't read anything that says you can scan HTML or XML in. I think if you were doing that, you need to use Python or something else though there's probably an R programmer out there that's just screaming at me <laughs> because this is a this is a language that d does usually have a lot of capabilities in. Uh, I find my problem with it is knowing those capabilities because it is it is very much a, a, you know a language of functions. But getting back to the grammar of graphics. So the idea here is you have one line and as you can see, you've got a plus there. So ggplot data equals data. What we're saying to ggplot is your starting data is going to equal this stuff up here. And that loads it into its memory. You're then going to give it the next point. And this is where the grammar of graphics is quite useful because it is about merging and piling up different interpretations of the data on top of each other's different mappings and a fun thing about these hypotheses is the ability to keep on adding layers on until you start to feel you've got you've gained what you wanted out of the data so if you see here geometric points geom points is the name of the function the mapping is going to be a function from ggplot called AES, which stands for aesthetics. X is going to be from the data IMDB, 
and y is going to be rotten tomatoes so if we run that remove any bad rows where there's no data and it'll create a scatter plot like this uh, which is what the geometric points mean so as you can see you'd say there's a relative correlation between you know the score and rotten tomatoes and imdb there's a few outliers uh, and actually imdb is much more conservative between the range of 2.5 and 7.5 with very few over 7.5 while rotten tomatoes goes from the full perfect movie of 100 percent down to zero percent so we're looking to work out what of these uh the, these uh, entertainment packages we're interested in so my first hypothesis going back to the Christiane method I'm coming up with ideas of what movies I want to look at and what I'm trying to kind of interest in and what might describe why you know a, a movie got the score it did so I'm going to pile up two geometric points on top of each other And if you know R, you'll know why 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 there's a little mistake in this, but it makes a point. So this will generate a graph, and now it's coloured in, and you can see you've got your red as the stuff which isn't action or adventure. And as you can see, why I was said it's saying there's a little bit of a mistake. Um, action and adventure are two genres that tend to coincide in fact they're actually really the same genre so you've only got the blue ones as adventure because this is doing it in order this this is piling up data on top of data and you are getting the first one action is then being having a plot of the adventure put directly on top of it which means you can't see the green uh, but it, it kind of shows how you might look at doing this sort of thing. So that being a wash, I'm now going to look into splitting up my data based on the first assigned variable in that list. This is the bit where I did this in Python, uh, got a data cleanse, and it's mapping the very first in a Lisp in a list list uh, value that it's finding so you can say that I cheated slightly with this bit Ooh, control V not V and you can see beautifully generated multicolor all the rainbow all the genres in a box plot but that's not going to help us with our hypothesis it's too dirty too all over the place I'm not going to be able to uh, you know come with a conclusion from that uh, so what might I do I might try and split that, that those up into lots of mini graphs and if you're from Excel you might think we well, can't really do that oh but you can uh, and if you notice you've got a geometric point and a facet wrap and the facet wrap lets you set the amount of rows and what that facet wrap will do is it'll take the value main which as you see here is your genres and it will split and do a little mini plot for every single one of those. So if we were trying to look for the hypothesis that genre affects IMD and Rotten Tomato score, we can see there's actually some cases of that. And if you were a data analyst at this point, you'd be writing down whole bunch of hypotheses 
whole lot of things. You'd probably be coming up here and hitting export and sending copy to clipboard and dropping that in your email to your manager, who I don't know is going wanting you to do data analyst to tell him what movie to watch in the evening. I'd love the places that you that that uh, I would love to work at a place that did this. Um, but you can see that there's a there's a very good use in, compared to say Excel in just mass producing a load of mini graphs and making decisions based on them. And you've done it with three rows of code. So next one. I'm going to use four rows of code and we're now going to try and work out uh, what of these entertainment packages do we really like and I haven't split them up into genres I've just used what you see something seen before but I'm going to use a bo box um, whiskers plot I've did some data cleaning in Python that went and split these up into just IMD, Rotten Tomatoes, and the key, because there is some cases where a movie's on Netflix and Prime Video, and so doing some data cleanse and splitting it up is something you have to do. But as you see, because we can chain lots of different plots over each other and lots of different bits, I can go down the list. I can do set up the aesthetics of the uh, the geometry is a separate line. I can set up the geometric points. And finally, and that, that gives you your facet wrap and as you can see, I'm not using main anymore, I'm using key. And last one is to add a box plot over the top. So running that, you then get Disney, Hulu, Netflix, and Prime Video. You've got your interquartile range over your Rotten Tomato score, because that was the one that actually you know, is, is most spread out. And you can sort of see where the me 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 middle is, the mean. And see in both of those. So you might sit there and go, if I'm just interested in Rotten Tomatoes, I might prefer that because the mean's a bit higher. Uh, as said, <laughs> there are other video companies available, but you get the gist. And you get the gist on how by scanning through data in this fast, simple way, using lots of graphs, uh, and each graph being produced from a single line of code, you can get through a lot of graphs in a day, and then you can hit export, send them to your manager, and hopefully that's a lot simpler than using, say, something like Excel. And it's also, not as much coding knowledge and processes as if you'd have given somebody Python where uh, you know you have a look at this and I've had to write some of my own functions. So there's definitely a use case there. There's definitely something to love about R and admire about it. Um, hopefully I'll do a few more videos on this and get into uh, hypothesis testing and the machine learning side of things. Uh, I would like to do modeling and everything. Uh, but there's lesson two. Have a good day. Bye.